All right, good morning, everybody. We are now back in the note packet on page five, and we are going to be practicing filling out this unit circle. Now, if you want, you could pause the video here and you could try as best you can to fill this out based on what we did in the previous videos, or I recommend going back to that blank unit circle page that I have linked up below the note packet. Maybe print off a few copies. That way um, you can practice until you really feel like you've got it down. So I'm gonna go through my steps again on how I go about filling out the unit circle. So I always start with my degree measurements first, but again, it doesn't matter if you wanna use the box or the rectangle to put your degrees or radians, it really doesn't matter. So starting with my degrees, this would be both zero degrees and also 360 degrees. This one is 90 degrees. This one, adding 90 more is 180 degrees. Adding 90 more is 270 degrees. And then adding 90 more takes me back to 360. The coordinates of those angles, if I go over one unit and up zero units, one zero. Over no units and up one unit, zero, one. Backwards one unit and up zero, negative one, zero. And then zero, negative one. Um, at this point, you also could write down the signs of your quadrants. This is quadrant one, and this has positive x values and positive y values for the coordinates. This is quadrant two, and you can use the number or Roman numerals, I like to be fancy. This has negative x values and positive y values. Down below, this is quadrant three, which has negative x values and negative y values. And this is quadrant four, which has positive x values and negative y values. All right, so there's all of our happy quadrant information. So now let's go ahead and start doing the rest of our degree measurements. So if I take this 90 degree angle and I cut it in half, that's going to give me 45 degrees. So all of the middle angles are going to be 45 degrees beyond those 90, 180, 270 angles that we just drew in. So 90 plus 45 degrees gives me 135 degrees plus 45, 180, plus 45 gives me 225 degrees, plus 45, 270, plus 45, 315. And folks, this would be a non-calculator portion of the test, so you would have to do those additions and simplifying of your fractions as we do the radians in your head. So just something to note that this is something on the AP test if you choose to take it someday for calculus, you would need to know cold. So there's our 45 degree angle increments. Now let's go ahead and do the 30 degree angle increments. So this would be 30 degrees, add another 30, 60 degrees, add another 30, takes us to 90, add another 30, 120, add another 30, 150, add 30, 180, add 30, 210, add 30, 240, add 30, 270, add 30, 300, add 30, 330, and then that takes me back to 360. So I normally start with the degree measurements first, now I am ready to do the radian measurements. Now for the radian measurements, um, what I would do is I would start with those same four angles that we began with. So zero pi and two pi corresponds to zero and 360. If I take two pi, the whole circle, and I cut it in half, that means this would be pi, just like 180 is half of 360 pi is half of 2 pi. If I take this angle and cut it in half again, that gives me pi over 2. So that means I'm going by half pi's all the way around. So 0 pi, half pi, 1 pi, 1 and a half pi, or 3 pi over 2. All right. So now I'm going to move to the 45 degree angle measurements, just like I did with the degrees, and then the 30 degree measurements. So if I look at the 45 degree measurements, and I'm going to try to draw what I was talking about in the last video. If I take this 
whole pi, this whole half circle, and I divide it into these 45 degree increments, we can see that I have one, two, three, four slices. So hopefully you can kind of see what I mean there. So four slices that I'm dividing this half circle into. So if I have pi and I'm dividing it into four pieces, then each of those pieces is a fourth. So that means this is pi over four, one pi over four, two pi over four, which simplifies to be a half, three pi over four, and then four pi over four, which simplifies to be one. Then five pi over four, six pi over four, which simplifies to be three pi over two. Seven pi over four, and then eight pi over four, which simplifies to be two pi. So now if I do the same thing, but I break this up into the 30 degree increments, now we see that we are taking that one pi and dividing it into one, two, three, four, five, six pieces. So these increments are going to go by six. So one pi over six. So one six, two six. So two pi over six is pi over three. 3 6 pi, 1 half pi. 4 6 pi simplifies to be 2 pi over 3. 5 6 pi. 6 6 pi, which is 1 pi. 7 6 pi. 8 6 pi, which is 4 pi over 3. 9 6 pi, 3 pi over 2. 10 6 pi. And 11 6 pi. Gross. Oof. So now we have all the radian measurements. So being sure that you simplify each of those fractions. So next, we are ready for the coordinates. So some students go through and they put those denominators of 2 everywhere. So you can go ahead and do that if you want. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that for the first quadrant. So we know that all of these will have denominators of 2. The middle one is always rad 2 over 2 for both the x and the y coordinate. So same x value, same y value, because it's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So pi over 2, or sorry, rad 2 over 2 and rad 2 over 2. So if I do that corresponding angle in each of the quadrants, changing its sign, this would have the same x and y value, but the x value would be negative. So backwards rad 2 over 2, up rad 2 over 2. In quadrant 3, we'd be going backwards rad 2 over 2 and down rad 2 over 2. So negative rad 2 over 2, negative rad 2 over 2. Then quadrant 4, forward rad 2 over 2, down rad 2 over 2. So this would have a positive x and a negative y. All right, folks. So now we have to decide, is this 1 half rad 3 over 2, or is it rad 3 over 2, 1 half? So what I do is I drop down. <laughs> Let's go ahead and drop down here. I look at this x distance, and I say, all right, which of these takes this length, which is one unit long, and cuts it into 1 half? Does this look like it's cutting that into one half? No. So that's how I know that this is the rad three over two and one half. Whereas this one, if I drop that straight down, this looks like that is half and that is half. So I've taken that one unit and divided it in half. So that's how I know that this one gets the half for the x-coordinate 
and the rad 3 over 2 for the y coordinate. So from here, we go ahead and complete our rectangles. So I'm going to drop down from this point. So this has the exact same x value, rad 3 over 2. But instead of going up one half, we're going down one half, so negative one half. Then I'm going to go straight over to the next point. So this point has the same drop down distance of negative one half. And instead of going forward rad three over two, we're going backward rad three over two. So negative. And again, I like this rectangle method of going across to the corresponding point, up to the corresponding point, and over to the corresponding point, because a lot of times students will switch those coordinates in quadrant three. So I really do like this rectangle method for filling out those coordinates. So if I go up to my next point, these have the same x value, so negative rad three over two. And instead of going down a half, we're going up a half. Then tracing over to the next point. That takes me back to quadrant one and we have made our rectangle. So now I can do the same thing with the next set of coordinates. So if I drop straight down, same x value, one half, but instead of going up rad three over two, we're going down rad 3 over 2. So as you can see, all of these coordinates in quadrant 4 have positive x values and negative y values. We go straight across to our next point. This has dropped down the same amount, so down rad 3 over 2. But instead of going forward 1 half, we have gone backwards 1 half. So negative 1 half. Notice that everybody in quadrant three has both a negative x and a negative y value. We go up to our next point, Oop. and we have gone backwards one half, that's why they are stacked on top of each other, but we have gone up rad three over two. So notice everybody in quadrant two has a negative x value and a positive y value. If we go straight across, we complete our rectangle, and that takes me back to that other Point. So folks, this is what you will need to be able to do. You will need to be able to generate. You will need to have memorized. So um, normally, if we were to take a test over this chapter, on the test you would generate from a blank unit circle, just like we did here, the whole thing, and then use that to do calculations like we will be doing in the problem below. Now, a few other things that we are going to add as part of the memorization of the unit circle is the last thing that we talked about on that blank one, which is that the x, y coordinates, the x value corresponds to cosine of the angle, and the y value corresponds to sine of the angle. Also, tangent of theta, is equal to y over x or sine theta over cosine theta. These are going to be helpful once we start evaluating using the unit circle below. And going back to these special triangles on the right side, just to review what we talked about in a previous video, remember your side shortcuts for these. S is always across from the smallest angle, so across from the 30 degree we would have S across from both the 45 degrees we would have s across from the 60 degrees we have s radical is it two or is it three it's three and i remember that because it's a 30 60 90 triangle and the hypotenuse for this one is 2s this one the hypotenuse is s radical 2 and how i remember radical 2 is that in this triangle two angles are the same and two sides are the same. So again, folks, everything at the top of this page, you will want to have memorized.
So we're gonna go ahead and stop with this video before we move on to the eight problems below because I really would recommend that you practice drawing, gosh, maybe two of these unit circles um, just to make sure you've got it down on how to fill out the whole thing. So there is um, a blank one in your homework packet for this chapter that you will need to fill out. So I would recommend doing maybe one blank one printed off from that uh, link that I have posted first, then doing the one in your homework packet as kind of a final practice. So practice making the unit circle a few times and once you have done that, then we are going to move on to these eight problems at the bottom of page five. 